Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our matinee performance of our children's musical theatre. Can I say, you're a, a little bit quieter than the elementary school we were on Thursday morning, so thank you for being such a respectful audience. Um, so on Thursday morning, I, I walked in and we had the whole of the elementary literally sitting in here, and, and as you can imagine, with 800 young people in here, there was a certain energy in this room, and then I walked backstage to where your children were, um, and it was about 8.20, and they were just about, just getting ready before they were gonna come out and do their debut performance, and I was just about to open the door, and I thought, okay, I sense this is gonna be absolute chaos in here. You can imagine the energy levels of nine and 10-year-olds about to do their debut performance for 800 kids. And so, I kind of thinking the worst, and I opened the door, and I walked in, and it was like walking into a, I don't know, a kind of zen place. There was a circle of 50 students and they were all holding hands and they had their eyes closed and they had smiles on their faces <laughs> and they were visualising what it was going to be if it had been a successful performance. And just the sense of spirit, calmness, community, collaboration and just purpose was just really palpable and I, I hopefully you've felt that with your kids over this journey of two or three months and in the anecdotes and the stories they've been sharing with you over the course because um, we've seen it at school and I think this is one of the really special elements of the elementary school year because it brings kids from a grade level from their own classes into a unique group together and enables them to have friendships and bonds and experiences which they don't necessarily get in their own classroom. And it always proves year after year after year just the powerfulness of learning outside of a regular school classroom. And so just a heartfelt thank you for your support. I know there's been transport arrangements and various things that you as parents have really helped with. So we really appreciate it. And I think your children really appreciate it. And when you see all these skills that they they leave here with, um, hopefully you'll see the, the benefit of it on stage this morning. So thank you for joining us, thank you for being so supportive and enjoy our children's musical theatre. Thank you. Good morning. I would like to tell you a story that my grandpa used to tell me over and over when I was a little girl. Once upon a time, there was a village in a remote location with a crystal clear, splashing waterfall surrounded by tropical, green, and lush rainforest. The villagers in this community were very friendly, positive, layback, and cheerful people who had lived there for generations and generations. They spent their days going to the market, collecting wood, playing games, and telling stories to the past time. The older people in the community would often pass down these stories to the younger people in the community. Oftentimes, these stories would make people's hair raise and blood curl, especially a, the story about the mythical monster behind the rainforest that apparently lived in the volcano nearby the village. Although the stories were very scary, no one really believed that they were true. They often just shrug them off as being stories meant to teach children different lessons about living safely in the village. Two of the children were very well known as they soon began to show everyone that they were very special. This is where our story begins. the elements that surround us are. 
The fire keeps us warm, the water quenches our thirst, and the mountains bring us shelter. We must never forget how lucky we are to be in this great community of ours. Yeah. 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 At first, 
It started off as small cracks in the village. As time went on, however, the girls started to steal things from the villagers, causing accidents, thinking it was funny, but people were actually getting hurt and losing valuable possessions. So the villagers finally had a talk with the girl to get her to stop, but she did not listen. She thought it was even more funny now that everyone was upset. Slowly, she could no longer tell the difference between what was right and wrong, and she gradually started to turn into a monster. First, she started to become hunched over, then started turning gray, then black, then red. Eventually, she even started to grow in size due to all the evil that was growing in her. Her eyes grew red, her teeth and nails became sharp, until she became unrecognizable by anyone that knew her. Among the villagers, there was a husband and wife who had special powers, but only used it for good. They never told anyone they had special powers until one day, the monster destroyed many houses and the only school in the village. This was the final straw. The couple knew they now had to do something about it and they had to do it fast. They needed to put an end to all the destruction that ha was happening before their village was completely wiped out. That day, they cast a spell on the monster and sent her to sleep in Mount Raga, that volcano over there, for a hundred years. No one believes that. It's true, it's true. Alu is right. She lives in the volcano nearby. If Alu says it's true, then it must be true. Oh, don't be ridiculous. There is no such thing as a giant lava monster. Yeah, use your head, man. Don't you think if there was a rog on nearby, we would have heard something by now? But Alu just said that the spell was cast a hundred years ago. So no, we wouldn't have heard anything. She is fast asleep. Boy, would she be angry when she wakes up. Elda, when was the last time the monster was seen? What year? I believe it was 1919. Okay, 1919 plus 100. Tell the direction of my Oh, yes, I should draw another line. Stop with 1919. Come on! It's a hundred years. A hundred years after 1919 is 2019. <gasps> who lived behind the rainforest. None of the villagers had ever seen Rogong in real life. They'd only heard stories. Was the monster real? Was it just a legend? The elder had just told them that if the legend was true, the monster was going to wake up any day now. However, after thinking about it, the villagers continued to believe that they were out of danger. And even if the monster was real and did wake up, she would probably leave them alone. They decided to push it out of their heads and continue with their normal lives. Good morning, sister. I had the worst sleep last night. Me too. I dreamt about the scary story of Ragon. I know. But everyone else seems too calm about it. Maybe we should just forget about it. No, we need to be prepared in case it's true. We are the only two people in the village that could defeat the monster. <laughs> Thank you. 
up to parades. Did you have any nightmares by chance? She's not even paying attention. Watch this. Mega, unfreeze that poor woman right now. That's not funny. Fine. Hey, when did you get here? <coughs> Come on, let's go find our friends at the market. Okay, it's a little funny, but you shouldn't do that to people. It's not respectful. What's the big deal? They don't even know chips being played on them. We have a bit of fun. Then none the wiser. Everyone's happy. That's the whole point. How would you like it if someone did this to you without your permission? Okay, okay, guys, stop arguing. Let's just move on. Hmm, I know. Let's get some apples from the village grandma. They're so sweet and juicy this time of year. Uh, guys, wait, what about him? We need to wake him up. Oh, all right. Once they know that they're acting unexpectedly, they'll 
will mend their ways. In my opinion, I think we should kick them out. We've given them so many chances and so many opportunities to make better choices, but it just seems they're getting worse and worse. You can barely go out nowadays without a fear of being frozen or put to sleep. I can't live like this anymore. Seriously, the other day during our play date, Naga froze me while I was on the toilet. A girl can't go to the bathroom in peace. I think we need to take this to a vote. We are going to do a blind vote, which means everybody needs to close their eyes right now. And close your eyes, Billy. I see you. Vote only once for these two choices. Only once. All those in favor of letting Maga and Maggie stay, please raise your hands. Thank you. You may put your hands down. All those in favor of exiling Maga and Maggie from the village, please raise your hand. Sophia, you already voted. <laughs> Carl, close your eyes. One more time, please. Please raise your hands in favor of exiling Maga and Maggie from the village. You may now open your eyes. Well, the majority has spoken. Tomorrow morning, the two children will be exiled from the village until further notice. But do you guys really want to do this? No. Yes! Yeah. We're just children! Thank you all for your thoughts. This meeting is adjourned. the children's departure. They were finally living free from their pranks, and many found it more peaceful around the village. They could go about their business without fear of being frozen or falling asleep. Everyone rejoiced except for the community elder Alley. He was old and wise and realized that no one cared about how they felt. Although he knew it was wrong to send the children away, he had no choice after the vote. Everyone in the community always went with what the majority wanted. This was one of the community agreements. Alu had a very bad feeling about this and was not happy to celebrate.
bad for him. He had to make a hard decision last night. I feel bad for him too. It must be really hard for him. He's never had to kick anyone out of the village before. And they're just kids. He must feel awful. Oh, he'll get over it. Yeah. What, what was that? Oh, that was just my tummy. I haven't eaten all day. Boy, for a small person, you have a very loud tummy. What? I'm really, really hungry. My mom says I'm a growing boy. Maybe it was an earthquake? I don't think so. I didn't feel anything. By those villagers down there. No one will expect me when I come hunting them down. <laughs> they think they can trick me again. They will try to run and hide, but it'll be too late. I will even be, I will even be there before they can say, "Run for your lives!" <laughs>
sent out of the village. They were feeling very sad and lonely. They found a safe spot where they could hide out for a, for a while. At this point, the kids had learned how to survive on very little food, but they were getting very hungry. They spent most of their time playing instruments and working on their magic and were getting low on their entertainment. As time went on, they began to get annoyed and irritated with each other and wondered what they might do now that things aren't going so well. On this particular day, as they were walking around looking for food, they heard a rumbling off distance. Was it thunder? Was it one of their tummies making noises? Was it Raga? Thank you. 
children who ever in thought were nuisance risked their lives and defeated Frogon, the giant. Even though the children had been kicked out of the village, they knew the right thing to do was to help their friends, even if they had not been kind to them in the past. Once Ragong was defeated, there was a huge sigh of relief across the village, and everyone began to celebrate. However, the two children were waiting to see what was in store for them. What might the villagers say to them now? Where Soliki Magamadi came to the rescue? You're right. Who knows what would have happened if they didn't come? put a zip line in the playground or not. Or the new treehouse we asked for. I want us to reconsider our decision to kick out the two children. They showed tremendous amounts of bravery and generosity by rescuing us from the monster Raga. We really need a vote on this. I say you let them back in. Yeah! yeah. Well, let's just take it to a vote, you know, just to make it official. All those in favor of letting them back in, say aye. Aye! And those against it, say nay. Nay! <laughs> Just kidding. All right, the ayes have it. Let's welcome those two kids back. You two rescued us from the village monster Rava. And we don't know what we could have done without you. We are very sorry for what we did and don't know just how we can repay you. Just because you were different than us, doesn't mean we should have treated you that way. Yeah, what you did was very brave. Can you stay with us again? We'd we'll love to have you back. We could even build you a brand new hut to live in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Do you really want us to? Of course we want you back. You're one of us. in a community, like the one they live in. Once they rejoined, the community people started looking at how they could use the children's different powers to make the community even better. They discovered that the mus musician can play music without making people fall asleep if she played upbeat tunes. They started having more sing-alongs together and started putting on talent shows so that everyone could share their unique talents. As time went on, the community got stronger, and instead of focusing on what they didn't like about each other, they started celebrating their differences and wonderful ideas and personalities that everyone had in the community. The Elder Owl was also happy and named this day Rogong Day so that everyone would remember what happened, and every year they would celebrate the lessons they learned in 2019.
and gentlemen, may I introduce to you our stage crew, Molly, Maya, Samantha, Simon, Mason, and Javi. Our lights and sound crew, Bryce and Seth. Villagers, Eugene, Sam, Julian, Shivan, Mason, Natasha, Leila, Mace, Nana, Joy, Javi, Malen, Lucy, Oliver, Javi, Leila, Harun, Maya, Simon, Molly, Laurel, Kara, Yushi, and Rahima. The old couple, Arjun and Nata. Birds, Nana and Shewin. Our village grandma, Georgia. Our villagers, Eleanor, Grace, Ruby, Landon, Alice, Aaliyah, Carl, Eden, Gavin, Laura, and Zach. Our main villager, Yuvin. Our elder, Alu Sabino. Our narrator, Isabella. And Raga, played by Francesca. Thank you all for coming. This is our last show together. So we're going to do something a little special. Um, we have to say a few thank yous, and then we're going to watch a little video about the process in CMT. I'm Mr. Robbie Smith. I'm the elementary music program leader. And this is Miss Peachy. And she's just going to give um, a couple thank yous to all the people that helped out throughout this process. So thank you. Hello everyone, please hold your applause till we're done um, naming everybody that we have to thank because there are lots of people to thank um, for this to even be possible. First of all, thank you to Mr. Campbell, Ms. Chateau, and Dr. Phelan for always supporting us. Ms. Hillman, who coached our kids and our CMT team. Ms. Julie for volunteering to do all the microphone and did all the microphone changes. Of course, there's Mr. Bong. Here's, he is our expert uh, theater technician who takes care of all our technical needs and also for coaching our lights and sounds crew, Bryce and Seth. There's also Dennis Lagdameo, who every year creates whatever the kids envision. This Asian village that you see back here, the volcano, and he also created Radang that Francesca wore, the big puppet. Um, there's Reinhardt, Mar Marvin, Noel, and Michael. Thank you for always videotaping our performances. And Ms. Starr, who took our professional photos. We also had some high school students, along with one of our fourth graders here, do our makeup. And that was Norbu, Avery, Jenny, Mary Maryam, and our very own Samantha. And thank you, parents. 
We know that your children have many activities to choose for, from after school. Thank you so much for supporting their choice in choosing CMT. And thank you for supporting us with, and your commitment with all our extended rehearsals and extra rehearsals. So thank you, parents. <laughs> then we have our CMT team, Ms. Jackie, Ms. Nadia, Ms. Sucre, Mr. Smith. Um, they have been our dream team, really. And they, they, they made everything in CMT happen. Uh, they stuck through and guided the kids with script writing and rehearsals, choreography, blocking, lights and sounds, and every celebration and heartache, they were there through it all. So thank you. <laughs> this year also happens to be Miss Sucre's last year with CMT because she'll be leaving at the end of this school year. So we wanted to say a special thank you to Miss Sucre for all the years of And last, but so, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's give it up for Miss Peachy, our musical and director of this fantastic musical. And last, but certainly not least, our very talented grade fours who came to work with a smile. And from this experience, they really have made so many friends across the grade level. And as actors and actresses, we have seen so much growth from the beginning of our sessions to this day. And no matter how many times we had to do a scene over, and no matter how hungry they were, even during our rehearsals, they never complained. And they have shown us, they have shown all of us adults exactly what teamwork means. So let's give a hand to our grade fours. As Ms. Peachy said, our grade four students worked really hard and this began in August. And there's so much work that goes into 45 minutes of this. They wrote this entire thing themselves, came with all, all the ideas. Even our, um, our monster was designed by some of our students. They made sketches and then Mr. Dennis built it for us. Um, but I think instead of me explaining what happened, we're gonna show um, a video uh, with some interviews, just kind of highlighting what the process was like for these students. So I hope you enjoy. was just working with the crew and having a bit, having a good time. Uh, definitely lights and sounds. Traveling and acting with my friends. Acting and singing and dancing. Because um, we get to work with Miss Jackie and Mr. Bomb. Um, like meeting all the new people and working together as a group. My favorite part about CMT was collaborating with um, everybody. My favorite part about CMT is when you act on stage and like play with friends. Acting and helping others out. To trust other people and like to trust yourself because you could get nervous if there are a lot of people. To be quiet backstage and show facial expression. That everybody is equal no matter if you're an actor, backstage crew, or director. Even if you have no experience, you can still do really good if you practice. 
that I should always appreciate whatever role I got because in the beginning I thought that I didn't like my role but now I've grown into it. That like like if even if some like every party has a role and it's just if somebody if the whole group collaborates then it like is really good. But if like a couple people aren't working like as the whole group, then it's not going to turn out like to the perfect. And when I made the most of the practice, then we when we like share ideas with others, and and that's all. I learned that when you act, you have to really act as if it was ha really happening in real life. I learned that everyone is part of this, and we're all in this together. seemed cool and um, Mr. Smith. Acting and having fun in the CMT. Mm, the thing I miss the most about CMT is acting and the teachers because the teachers helped us a lot. I think I miss like the most my friends that act with me because like my friends help me sometimes like I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm probably going to miss like, like meeting new people and getting the chance to perform in front of like almost the whole school. So everybody is very accepting and everybody works in a community. Well, CMT, it is only one like one big moment. On um, other things, there's a few big moments. So once that one big moment is done, then I guess it's over. <laughs> to always show expression and always be good to the teachers. I think I'm going to miss the teachers and all the working together as a team and also just the acting and having fun. Don't give up and don't keep <laughs> Yes. It's, it's, it's okay if you mess up because it's just practice and that just take your time. My advice is don't expect everything to be perfect or the way you want it. Because sometimes one, one thing goes one way, but then it turns out to be another way. Don't worry about it. It's okay. You can do anything. Yes. Let's give a huge round of applause for our CMT crew and cast. Just a couple things before we go. Parents, we're going to take all of uh, your children backstage and you guys can exit and head down to the lunch, which is in the ES canteen, and you can meet them there, just for uh, safety purposes. We'll get the microphones off and the costumes changed and the makeup off. We'll probably be down there in 10 minutes. We'll come down as a collective. And anyone that was here just in the greater ISM community, thank you so much for coming. We hope you enjoyed and take care. <laughs>